Uh, hello and welcome to episode two of Scratch TV Meets. So, don't know how much you know about this um, Tom Glenn guy, um, singer songwriter. Um, I worked with the likes of um, Bugsy Malone, um, Chasing Status. Um, had some mild success. Um, just released album um, Lighting Matches. Listened to it the other day. Good album. Really deep. Um, some um, quite dark stuff on there. Um, still, um, really awesome guy. Makes some great music. Um, but something that caught my eye as I was looking through like his previous stuff, I found this um, independent article. Um, and he mentioned something that happened um, when he was younger. Um, let me just find it. When he was um, 18, about um, how he was attacked. And he had like a um, metal plate like put in his jaw. Um, and there was a quote from him. I don't know where it is now. That it was like he went through... Maybe it wasn't this article, maybe it was another one. But he talked about how, like, it made him realise that he was in, like, a bad place. Uh, here we go. So when he was 18, he said that he was caught in the wrong place at the wrong time. And he was attacked by a group of sta strangers. And found himself recovering with four metal plates in his jaw. And uh, that was a big factor in his music. And sort of what encouraged him to, like, pursue it to a bigger extent. And that's something that I'm really interested to talk to him about. Because with this series, I want to, like... Um, I want you to get to know the people that I interview, but I want to put across a message, and I want people to be able to take something from this. And I think... To anybody that's in like a bad place who's hanging out with the wrong people, I think that he could possibly be the guy who might be able to say something, who might be able to reflect that he can, he can, that he's someone that's been sort of through that sort of thing and can talk to you about it like an adult. Um, I don't know, man. I have to just see sort of what we get out of it. I'm Callum Danes, here from Scratch TV, with Tom Grennan. Hello, mate. How are you? I'm good, man. How are you? All right, mate. Yeah, I've got a bit of a wisdom tooth problem, but I'm good. What happened to it? I don't know yet. It's just sore. Like, really sore. Just life on the road? No, just teeth problems, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, how's the tour going? So, we're on two more shows after this one? Yeah, uh, no, four more shows after this one. Um, but, yeah, it's been really good, man. It's, this is... I love being in Birmingham. This is the second biggest show of the tour, so yeah, it's going to be good tonight. Is this your first time playing this venue? Yeah, yeah. Excited? Nervous? No, I'm excited more than nervous, man. It's going to be good, man. Uh, I see your tattoo. Yeah. What's what's those? Uh, 5446 is a Toots and the Maytel song, and then 95 is when I was born, and then OY is where my dad's from in Ireland. Okay. Yeah. I heard you have like a lot of tattoos, so like, can you talk us through some of the other ones? Um, yeah, I've just got tattoos that are pretty shit, and I just get random tattoos. I don't know, a few of them got meanings, but not ma not many of them. But yeah, I've got a few of, few tattoos. You just you get them for fun, sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. What's some of your favourites? Uh, these ones are my hands. Yeah. Uh, I've got a Wallace on my knee and then a robot and his name's Wallace so yeah what, like Wallace and Gromit like Wallace or yeah. my mate got Gromit and I got Wallace <laughs> so you recently like attempted like a world record yeah. so like what was that about like yeah I just I uh, wanted to break a world record um, and we did it we went to 12 different places in 10 hours and yeah, we just smashed it out. It was good. It was fun. So, like, what were you doing at each place? Like, performing or, like... Yeah, yeah. Uh, doing, it was a 
world record for how many gigs we can get in in 12 hours or 10 hours or something like, or something like that yeah it was good though I imagine you were dead at the end of that though yeah it was fun though it was good I was dead but the the fans kept me going so it was good a lot of our audience sort of um, would have probably first heard of you when you came out with um, Chase and Status, working with those guys. So um, can you sort of talk about that and like how that came about and how it was working with them? Uh, they just heard one of my songs and invited me into the studio and then and, and then we wrote This All Goes Wrong. And yeah, it was, again, it was a bit of an unreal experience and something that has helped my career big time. So yeah, big up to Chase and Status and I've always got love for the boys and they're sick. Do you think you'd go, you'd work with them again? Uh, sort of thing. Depends, man. It depends whether they want me to. Um, like never say never. <laughs> um, and then sort of after that, you're working with like Bugsy, Ma- um, Bugsy Malone like the year later. So um, how did that come about? Because I sort of I saw that and I thought it was a bit of a weird sort of. I didn't expect it coming. You know what I mean? Like different nah. styles and that. Like. Uh, I don't know if it was weird. Um, but it was it was cool. I'm a big Grime fan, and he was a fan of mine, so we we linked up and and we created Memory Lane, and and it was good. And again, Muggsy is a sick guy, and and it worked well. So yeah, I don't think it's weird though. I think it's good. Can we expect to see you sort of working with more Grime artists, touching on more like the Grime side then? Uh, probably. If I don't say I'm 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 not going to say that I'm going to be doing Grime music. Um, but like, I'd definitely love to jump into that world again and and work with a few more grime artists. Yeah. Um, and you were getting props. I see you getting like you getting a lot of love from the scene, but you're also getting love from Elton John. I saw, mm. which sort of how like so what did he say to you? Like cause I heard you guys talked on the phone and that. Yeah. Uh, he just said that he's a fan of my music and and he likes what I'm doing and and yeah, again, it was a pretty surreal experience. He's He's a legend, it's Elton John, isn't it? So if Elton John's giving you a bit of recognition, it's cool, man. Um, so yeah, big up the rocket, man. <laughs> Collaboration coming soon? Maybe. <laughs> so you've had two singles from the album so far. So found what I've been looking for is sort of more sort of upbeat. And I think it's quite, I find it sort of a bit more approachable and sort of more upbeat and optimistic than say a lot of your earlier singles and even like the second single barbed wire so what can we sort of those that haven't listened to the album yet what can they sort of expect from the album with two i'd say slightly different um singles in terms of direction and sound and that uh i'd say expect expect there's ballads on there there's 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 all sorts of different things in there. I, I don't know what genre my music is, and and you can try, like, whoever puts the label on it, then fair enough. I would love to know what, what they think, but uh, I don't know what it is. But they expect there's diff- all sorts of different like like feelings in there, and and yeah, it's a ju- it's a journey. The album, so yeah. You don't conform, so you don't you don't conform to a, gen- a genre. You don't like write to say like, okay, I want to make an R and B song. You write. Yeah, no. I just wait. I just write songs and see where they, where they go. Yeah, that's real. That's cool. So you could probably tell this better than I could, but when you were eighteen, you were attacked um, by was it a group of guys? Yeah, uh, yeah. It was just un- wrong place, wrong time, and I had my jaw broken. Got put in hospital for like five or six days, and yeah, something that I'm now thankful for. Um, in what sort of way? Uh, it made me grow up. It made me change the outlook of life. It made me, it made me write better. It, mm. um, yeah, it's something that it definitely put me into a dark place. But if I wasn't in that place, I probably wouldn't be here now. Do you think that that sort of helped with your mu- uh, help with your music, help with your writing, and sort of yeah, definitely. And you think that that uh, you said you were in a dark place at the time, so you feel like that's helped you to come into like better place to what you're doing now uh maybe i'm just it's i was in a dark place and it made me that dark place got made my creation my like creative brain um more vulnerable and more and more kind of yeah it made it better i suppose made me made me dig deep into what where i was and it made me 
want to speak. I don't know. It's made me want to just write and talk about what the fuck was going on in my life, isn't it? Yeah. What would you say to anybody who thinks that they're in, who's in a dark place, or that thinks they're in a dark place like that? Mm. Say, so I'd say to know that it's alright to be in that place, mm. um, and that it's that loads of people around you and that, who love you and stuff, and and to trust them and and to know that it's alright to be in that dark place and and yeah. Nice, right, album's out now. Those who want to get it, tour's still available. Yeah. Four dates. Yeah, no, nah, so yeah, the only th- the only date that is available is Margate. Um, apart from that, it's all sold out. So yeah, if you want to come Margate, come Margate. And if you when? don't, then don't. When's Margate? Margate's in like two days. Okay. Yeah. So. Awesome. awesome. Yeah, and if you haven't got light matches, I'd suggest you go and get it because it's an um, unbelievable record, and I love you for it very much for that. Big up. Awesome. Thanks, man. Cheers.